All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Dave Curlin, who is in Boston, Massachusetts. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing good, John. How are you doing? Well, doing fine, doing fine. Uh, yeah, keeping everything uh, moving along. I'm here in lovely San Diego, so you know, I can't complain about being quarantined here. So, um, now you so can Dave, go outside and it's nice out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I tell you, I haven't seen as many people in our neighborhood as I have in the last couple of weeks. It's like happy hour every day. People are out walking, are <laughs> walking their dogs, are out running. Everybody is waving and saying hello to each other from a six foot distance, obviously. <laughs> and, but it is, but it, it's it's strange because it's, it's there's something really nice about it that I hope that endures after this. I hope maybe this sense of community and this shared experience once we're through it that it will endure a little more. And maybe I mean myself included, maybe I'll remember to keep keep my head up when I'm out and actually acknowledge the other people in the world. Oh, that would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be. Okay, so Dave's a sales performance expert, best-selling author, award-winning blogger, columnist at Top Sales Magazine, and also CEO of the Objective Management Group, and CEO of Curlin Associates as well. So what I wanted to uh, talk about today is, uh, Dave, you've done a lot of work around motivating salespeople and how to motivate them and how to have them... You know, not not maybe make as many excuses as to why they're not performing and that. And right now, okay, so we have a situation where motivating salespeople is key. And second off, there is going to be business that goes away because of the current situation we're in. But there is also still business out there. So So one of the things I wanted to talk about is how do we help people not kind of just shut down and think, okay, I can't sell anything because of this, uh, this situation. And, and it become a kind of a catch all excuse. So, um, so first of all, Dave, how do you motivate salespeople when something uh, out of left field like this comes in and just kind of knocks us all for six? It's a great question. And it's a complex question today because mm -hmm. there's no easy answer. Sure. Right. Rah, rah, rah is not going to work. Mm -hmm. And let's get focused on your goals isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got to be realistic. So the first step in being realistic, I think, is to tell our salespeople like it is. And there's four buckets right now of business. There's business that's gone yep. for at least the foreseeable future. You know, if you're in um, the restaurant business, if you're in uh, travel and tourism, I mean, and discretionary retail, for the most part, those are done until the economy reopens up. So anybody who sells to those businesses is done along with it. And there's, there's no way you can sugarcoat it. Yep. Uh, but there are some other groups. There are businesses that are sort of reduced. You know, they're not doing as much, but they're still open. They're still working. There's business as usual. Almost all the business services are mm -hmm. doing business as always, but remotely. And then there are businesses that have been affected the other way. They're booming. Anybody mm -hmm. making medical equipment, medical supplies, anybody in logistics, the food supply chain, the cleaning supply chain. I mean, look, those businesses are going wild. Even companies like Zoom mm -hmm. uh, are and Google are going to be going crazy at Microsoft. So it's it's not fair first to just say, oh, my God, it's the end of everything. Yeah. Because that's only true for a small audience of target market that companies might be selling to. And to a lesser degree, another target market. But most of the businesses that most of the salespeople call on are still functioning and still need help. So that's the first step. The second step is do something. There's yeah. nothing more motivating than doing something. If you sit around feeling sorry for yourself, uh, there's no hope. But if you do something, so what can you do? Uh, yeah, you can send out emails, but that doesn't feel productive. Mm -hmm. That just feels like you sat and hid behind your yeah. screen and did something that nobody's going to see because everybody's sending emails, pick up the phone. The one thing we've seen over the last two weeks of everybody being working from home, is nobody's traveling and nobody's in meetings. So everybody has time. They're answering calls. They're returning calls. Yeah. People aren't being assholes to each other. 
uh, they're, they're being generally kind. So if you call and you ask how people are doing and you have something of value that you can offer that will help people, that they will talk to you. And having conversations equates to having done something. And mm -hmm. now you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to see that people are working and people are functioning and they might not be able to meet with you today or buy from you today, but you can pipeline build. So yeah, that when yeah. the economy turns back on, uh, there's stuff that you can immediately go out and close. Yeah. And I just want to just want to un underline the two points you've made so far for everybody because it's really critical. I think number one is understand understand your business, right? Understand the the customers that you sell into, the prospects you sell into. Understand what's happening in their businesses because, as you say, they might they might have shut down completely. They might be doing okay. You know, they're adjusting and they're still trying to move forward, or they may be actually booming in 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 this circumstance. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, don't sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Get get motivated. Get get out there. Do something. And as you said, people are very receptive right now to to talking and communicating, and they're going to tell you um, what you need to know. And you can have probably very very good conversations because people are more amenable to them right now. I can't tell you how many emails I've received from salespeople in the last ten days saying, "What am I going to do?" Mm -hmm. How how am I going to schedule meetings? And so you've got to think virtually, you know, because yep. prospects are going to come back with mm -hmm. an objection. Well, we can't meet with you right now. Sure. Well, of course, I, I can't meet with you either, but mm -hmm. we can get on a virtual call. We can connect over video. We can have a preliminary conversation to see how we might be able to help you down the road. Um, and that's the other thing. If you get the conversations and you get people engaged, they're going to be giving you stalls and put offs and delays and yeah. pauses and understand it, but try to work with it and still schedule something. Mm -hmm. It's pipeline building time. This is no different than the two weeks between uh, Christmas and New Year. That's one week, isn't it? Yeah. Well, um, for, math, some people, it's too, for some I'm, people, it's I'm two remote weeks. for too long, <laughs> <laughs> it, but it's no different than the end of the year, but you mm -hmm. can't get meetings with people, but you can pipeline build for the next year. So it's just like that right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's an interesting thing is particularly if you're in if you're in technology or or management consulting or process or whatever, one of the things that. Uh, over the last while, everybody has talked about digital processes, right? It's, it's Everybody acknowledges that they have to get their digital processes in order. But most people have kind of stalled on it or kind of half done it. And But now is the time where people realize now that they have to get those in place, not just for now, but for the future. And they've seen what happens when you don't have it. So there's a lot of, there's still a lot of work that's going to be going on there. And this is a great time if you're in those kind of services or technologies really to engage with your customers and ask them, how are you, how are you adapting to the current reality? How are your digital processes? Uh, how are you organizing yourself? How are you making sure that you can continue to work? And those are conversations that people are very open to. Yeah, and this is a good time to get that stuff done and get people trained yeah. on it. Uh, and, you know, I mentioned virtual meetings and selling over video. Um, my virtual background here isn't working very well because the headphones are floating around in my virtual <laughs> background. So while I'm talking, I'll take them off for a minute. But I am embarrassed by how awful salespeople are when it comes to not selling over video, just right. being on video. Yep. They can't get themselves centered in the frame. Uh, they can't get in a, an environment where there's enough light and they're not like a black shadow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they can't turn their mics on and off and their cameras on and off. Uh, it takes them 15 minutes once they're in to actually be able to participate. I mean, this is the time to get used to this technology. Oh, yeah. This is the future and the future is here now. And yeah. this is the and, future and, of selling is the near future of selling anyhow. Yeah. And, and it's a really, and it's a really important point you make there because uh, even if you weren't using virtual selling techniques before this, you're likely to be using them for quite a while to come yet. And you may find, and here's the thing is uh, over the years, and we've discovered this is customers start to actually want to deal virtually. So you better get used to it. And the other thing is you're absolutely correct is just be disciplined. Like, 
figure it out, practice, get your camera, get a setup for yourself and turn your camera on when you engage with somebody. Even if you only turn it on for the first while to say, hello, Dave, just want to put a face to the name. This is who I am. And just come across. It'll make such a such a big difference. But yeah, if you're a salesperson and you're still struggling or avoiding the whole being on camera, you got to get over it. Yeah. And not only that, <laughs> um, at least put some nice clothes on from the waist <laughs> up. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty for some internal meetings over the last couple of weeks of having on a t-shirt and not shaving in the morning. But if you're facing the outside world, uh, at least from the waist up, be presentable. Yeah. Uh, Cause yeah. you're not only presenting yourself, you're presenting your company and you yeah. don't want that to be the image. And these virtual backgrounds, Zoom lets you use the virtual background, and it's a great alternative to showing the dumpy room you might be sitting yeah. in with all the junk piled up behind you. It's much more professional. And all you need, any, any JPEG will work yep. as a background. It doesn't have to be your logo. They give you some default ones. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can be in front of the Golden Gate Bridge or in yeah. outer space or whatever. Uh, but just dress it up. This doesn't take a lot of effort or a lot of work or a lot of time, but do it. And the other thing is you're going to find that once you're doing some virtual selling and having virtual meetings and having virtual calls, you can visit with eight customers a day yeah. virtually, where if you were in your car driving from customer to customer, maybe you could only see two or three a day. This is much more efficient and the meetings will be shorter mm -hmm. and that's better for everybody. Yeah, and and to and to your point, I mean, you can do you could do eight uh, meetings in a day, and they'll be shorter, they'll be more focused. But also, people right now, if you're if you're suddenly working from home, a lot of people are discovering that it actually creates a lot of time that they didn't think they had normally because the commute time is gone. The uh, drive-by meetings at people's desks, the so-called water coolers, the, the lunch, all of those things are gone and people are suddenly finding, wow, I didn't realize I had this amount of time yeah, in the day. Even the so lunch hour is gone. Yeah, exactly. So you can schedule. So there's people are available that much more, which I think is, is, an, is an aside for another conversation. But I think that's why we're going to see uh, the acceleration of virtual working. But, but right now, I think you're correct. Is like it, it says people need to look at this as an opportunity. Say, now is my chance to actually get to talk to more of my prospects and customers than probably I would normally. Exactly. Uh, I think this is a great time to be in sales. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And let's face it, uh, Dave, uh, you're going to have to sell your, we're going to have to sell ourselves out of this, exactly. uh, out of this eventually when things turn around and, and the revenue is going to drive the recovery. So as you said earlier is getting your building pipeline now is critical. Even if it is pipeline where people say, well, everything's on hold for three months and you go fine. But what is it that you are looking to do so that you can get ahead of the curve? Exactly. And when we turn the corner on this, when it's okay to open our businesses up and do business again, and that money's been pumped into the economy so that companies can reopen and can get back to normal, the, the salespeople and the sales teams and the companies that do pipeline building right now are going to be the ones in a position to bring in all that business come June 1st or July 1st, whatever the date may be. Exactly, exactly. So I think the, the key message coming out of this is to look on this, use this as an opportunity, right? Build your pipeline, get yourself in, in a good position for the recovery. And to be honest, this is the time not to sit down and feel sorry for yourself. This is a time to outwork the other people who are sitting exactly. down and feeling sorry for themselves. That's, that's the other thing. You're going to have to work two to three times harder to do the same revenue you were doing before. Uh, but you can be two to three times more efficient at the same time. Yeah. Now, the, the big downside is that content like this, this interview, the broadcast I did last Friday, uh, most of the content I'm writing, none of it's going to age very well. This, this yeah. is going to be content that uh, we're going to be able to send people to for months to come and years to come. This is pretty much going to go away when the virus goes away. Yeah, well, to some degree, but I also think uh, there's some good messages in there, particularly, I mean, you're going to be ver you're going to find that you're going to be doing a lot more virtual working in the future. Uh, so you might as well get used to the um, 
you might as well get used to how you do it. And uh, and then I think it's it's a good lesson to, hey, listen, the law was going to be hiccups and downturns and things that show up in the future. So I think uh, what you said about uh, uh, your understanding the business that you're selling into, getting getting busy with high value activities and really, and building pipeline at times when it seems hard to build pipeline is always a good thing to do, even if you're building future pipeline and it's, but understanding what might happen and what customers might do in the future is good because then you're ahead of the curve. Exactly. All right. Well, listen, this is great, Dave. We're uh, bumping up against the end of our time here. But before we go, all of Dave's information will be in his contributor bio below. But before we go, Dave, tell people a little bit about yourself and your organization. Well, I just figured out selling about 40 years ago. Uh, I've had Curlin and Associates since 1985, Objective Management Group since 1990, OMG's the leading provider of mm -hmm. sales-specific evaluations and assessments in the world voted nine mm -hmm. times in a row the number one sales assessment on the planet and Curlin's a global sales consultancy we do everything soup to nuts uh, as it relates to sales consulting sales process sales infrastructure sales sales management training and coaching and recruiting Mm -hmm. That's all yeah, I could fit I, into that minute. Yeah, I was going to say it's great, and yeah, I would uh, I would encourage people to look at the sales assessments because that those, I think, uh, you know, one of the hardest things it remains, and I think will always remain, is like hiring good salespeople. It just seems to be one of the toughest things that you can do. So leveraging things like um, sales assessments is a very good part of that process that you should all look at. Um, listen, Dave, this has been fantastic. Thank you for joining me today. Stay safe over there in Boston, and I'll see everybody else. Hopefully. Thanks for inviting me, John. Stay safe in San Diego. Yeah, but absolutely. Enjoy the weather that we can't enjoy here. Yeah, yeah, the, I will. So as I said, I mean, I can't, uh, <clears throat> I can't and won't complain. There you go. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. Okay, I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. All right, bye now. Bye now.